What is good everyone? I'm Forrest Walker and for this video I'm going to do an overview and final impressions of Mince Belarus and my time covering and photographing the city. I'm going to start off with some of the things I like best about photographing mints. Then we'll get into some of the challenges of photographing mints. Then I'll share some of the highlights of my experience covering the city and we'll finish or end with a photo finish where I've selected around 10 photos where I share some details behind the photos and then I do have a few details on what's coming up next for one I'll be in Yerevan Armenia and I'll be based there for a little bit still waiting to get back to my home base so that's what I'm doing this video and let's get into it starting off with some of the things I like best about photographing Minsk one of the biggest things I enjoyed about photographing and covering Minsk more relates to the time of the year I was here, which was from December into January, peak winter and Christmas season. So I had the snow, I had the winter atmosphere, the cold, and I also had a lot of Christmas atmosphere. They did a lot of different Christmas markets. There was decorations for at least a month straight there. They celebrate two Christmases, so it spanned quite a bit of time. And you really had a lot of that Christmas and winter atmosphere, which was pretty unique for me. I haven't really photographed a city quite like that when it comes to that atmosphere. So if I was coming to Minsk, I know a lot of locals would say come during the summer and I should come back here during the summer to really see. And I, and I know that you'll have the sunny weather, you'll have better light, you'll have longer days, you'll have more life outside. But at the same time, when it comes to winter, I think Minsk is, is a pretty unique city to be in and, and brings a lot of that atmosphere you're not going to find in most other cities. I covered a photo walk talk specific on the Christmas markets, so you can check that out. But that was a highlight here, photographing the Christmas markets. There was quite a few, but there was one especially that was really good at night. And then it wasn't just the fact you had those Christmas markets and decorations everywhere and you had the winter atmosphere with the snow and the ice and all that but it wasn't just that you also had the character of the people in the city now the people here have a lot of character not just specific to the winter but when it comes to winter time the clothing here is somewhat unique to the region a lot of fur a lot of big coats uh, which was fun to play with when it comes to photography but then the fur is beautiful especially when you have the light you have those fur like russian russian fur hats and you had that and which adds a lot to photos and creates kind of a i don't know a nostalgic atmosphere feeling too so that was a big highlight and different from other cities uh, one thing is i didn't know if i was going to include this on my major city work because i did finish that but because of the whole pandemic and everything being pushed around this year i decided why not add this to the major city work because I've covered, before this, I covered 105 cities on the major city work spanning 75 countries. And I have to say, Mint stands out as unique compared to all the other cities I've covered. So it'll be city number 106. Uh, Belarus is the 76th country. So I'm glad I decided to add it to the major city work. It's a, it's a inter very interesting city. And some of the other things I really liked about photographing here, you had some of that Soviet atmosphere. It is known for that. It's known for a lot of its Soviet architecture. During uh, World War II, a lot of the city was destroyed. And so you had, during the whole Soviet Union, you had all the construction of the Soviet buildings. And you have a lot of atmosphere that's still kept to this day with the hammer and sickle and things like that, which adds quite a bit two photos. Now I've covered Eastern Europe and ex-Soviet countries pretty extensively. I enjoy them quite a bit for photography. So it doesn't stand out so much to me when it comes to the Soviet architecture, but for a lot of other people it would, and they do preserve a lot of that. But it has a mix of modern too. It's it's not like you're back in time in the Soviet days. There's It's a modern city too. It's a very clean city. So you have the mix of statues and little quirks like that. But you have a modern city too, which makes it enjoyable to photograph and walk and explore. Now I'm gonna get into it when I get into the challenges, but it is a very spread out city. But you do have a, a nice metro system here and it's extremely cheap and it gets you to a lot of places. I used it quite a bit here. Normally, uh, I like to walk as much as possible, and I, still in Minsk, I walked as much as possible, but a lot of time, it's just, it, it's just a waste of time to walk everywhere because you have a lot of stretches where you don't have a lot of life and things like that. And when you have the metro here, it's very easy. It gets you to different spots very quickly and very cheap. So I do recommend taking the metro if you're ever here and just explore the metro, just get off at different stations. So you have that similar feel and construction that you would see in a lot of other Eastern European 
metro systems, which can be good for photography. Now they say that you shouldn't really photograph metros here, but I never got stopped once and I even photographed in front of workers. So I don't know, maybe it can be a problem for you, but I didn't have a problem here. And while the city is pretty spread out in the center, it's nice and walkable. There's a lot of different spots you can go to in a relatively short amount of time. I stayed in the center and the location was perfect. You can go along Independence Avenue, go to a lot of the squares, got, go to a lot of the parks. I'll mention them further in the video, get, get into a little more detail. But there's quite a few places you can go. Sometimes when I didn't have a lot of time to explore because I had other work, I would just get out and do a quick couple hours and walk the center. And it's, it was always good. You could always see something. It's not a ton of life, but enough life. And there's enough spots to go to that are close to each other. So if you're gonna stay here, I would definitely stay in the very center. Now outside of the center and the different spots around the center and the parks and the river, one of the other things I really enjoyed photographing and exploring were the different neighborhoods and the courtyards and the big like Soviet style apartment blocks. You can find these around the city. Sometimes you can take the metro to different spots and just get out and you'll see. There's one that I really actually enjoyed was by the National Library, the different apartments there and the courtyards. I spent uh, multiple days just walking around the courtyards and exploring the different apartment areas. And it was really interesting. You have a lot of atmosphere there too. And each courtyard has little, almost like mini parks and you have people walking around. It was something I found here that I really enjoyed and somewhat unique to the city too. If you're tired of the center and you want a different atmosphere, just find the different neighborhoods kind of on the outside of the center and just explore away in the different courtyards. Some of the apartment buildings, they have artwork on the side, like older Soviet artwork. You'll find sometimes even more life in those neighborhoods than you do around the different centers and squares. So it's it's definitely something I'd recommend doing. Overall, I really enjoyed covering Minsk. I think it's a great city, unique city, and I didn't get so much into the character of the people, but Overall, at the end of the day, that was probably the best thing about the city. It's very easy to photograph people. There was some curiosity. You don't have a lot of photographers coming here. So when they see you doing street photography, candid photography, you get a lot of looks. But I didn't have one bad experience with people. The police are a different story. Uh, but you probably don't want to photograph the police too much. I still did a little bit, but they don't really want it done so if they catch you they might say something but when it came to regular people i didn't have one bad reaction not one person got mad at me just a few people were curious about what i'm doing but other than that it was great experience with the people and they have a lot of character here the people and the atmosphere has a little bit of a i don't know if i want to say innocence but but they're they're not quite as exposed to tourism as much and things like that, which is a good thing for photography. You get a little more, it feels a little more genuine and authentic photographing Mints. So that was one of my favorite things. So overall, Mints was a great city to photograph and I would highly recommend it, especially if you like that Eastern European and Soviet style. Now let's get into some of the challenges of photographing Mints. There are definitely challenges here. Not a lot of people have photographed Mints. That was one of the first challenges was just getting kind of an idea of where to go. So I basically just explored all the city myself. There wasn't a lot of information, not a lot of photography on Mints. So it's just a city you just got to jump into. To. Now, if you watch my videos, maybe you have more of an idea of places to go and things to photograph. But there's not a lot of information on Minsk. That's not necessarily a bad thing, though. But one thing that is kind of a, a negative, I have to say, and I had read this too, was it's very spread out. So for street photography, the best type of city usually is a city where it's very compact and you can walk everywhere. A lot of Western Europe and a lot of, a lot of different cities, they're very walkable and you can just walk from all these different interesting spots and you're always going through some type of life through the center of the city or the surrounding parts. In Minsk, you're gonna have a lot of areas if you're walking from A to B where you have no life. The streets are wide, the buildings, uh, most of them are kind of low and they're just kind of, you know, not too interesting. There's the Soviet type of buildings, which personally I do kind of like, but some people wouldn't like it so much for backdrops. And you don't have a lot of color at all. It's a very, I don't know, I want to say kind of drab city. Now that can be good as a background though, when you do have color coming in the scene, it will really pop. But 
you have a lot of lighter colors, the grays and the tans. So yeah, it's not the most walkable city for street photography. Around the center, you can go to quite a few spots nearby. But even in the center, it's not always extremely lively compared to some other big cities. And you're not going to have the chaos of like in India, of course. But at the same time, it's kind of relaxing walking the streets in Minsk. And it is enjoyable too. And you really just have to observe your surroundings more. And when you find something really jump on it and photograph it. Now I mentioned I really enjoyed the winter atmosphere and the snow, but I do have to say when I came here at the start, it snowed for a few days and then it didn't snow again the rest of the month here. So I didn't have as much snow as I would have liked because I really did enjoy seeing everything covered in snow. Luckily it stayed around negative one to zero degrees. So the snow lasted quite a bit of time. And then I think it snowed one more time a little bit, but I didn't have as much snow atmosphere. But the worst part about that was the light. After it snowed, the light pretty much went away. It was cloudy. I think I had the whole time I was here, the first full day I was here, I had some beautiful light and then I only had one more day with any sunlight the rest of the month. So I didn't have a lot of light here. The light doesn't last long, of course, during the winter because we're pretty north. So it lasts around four or five hours of good light. But by good light, I just mean daylight because the rest of the days was just overcast and gloomy. So you didn't have a lot of good light. It did add to the atmosphere a little bit, but the couple days I had of good light made me wish I had that good light the whole time because when the light is out, it was beautiful. It was that, that nice winter light. And the one day I had it after it snowed was my best day photographing the city, definitely. So the light always makes a huge difference and I didn't have a lot of that, unfortunately. When it came to hot spots, guaranteed spots of activity and life or photography, there wasn't a lot going on in Minsk for that. Now I imagine in the summer, the squares are a lot more you know, act active and a lot more life. Now I was here during Christmas time, which added some life. Before the Christmas market started, a lot of those squares were completely dead. But once the market started, you had some life there, especially around the sports center. But other than that, it was mostly just in the center, people walking along the streets from point A to B, not a lot of activity hanging out in one area. But there were some spots and I just had to work harder to find them. So I'm going to share some of those next. But I have to say that really the highlights of photographing mints were the winter atmosphere, the snow, the cold, the character of the people during the winter, and then the Christmas markets. I really just enjoyed photographing and covering a city like mints during this atmosphere in this time of the year. It was, it was great for photography and the photos I took of mints are completely different than a lot of the other photos you'll see from me because of that time of the year and the city really too. So I enjoyed that quite a bit. Now after researching and covering the city and exploring so many different areas of Minsk, some of my favorite spots had to be first Independence Avenue and that's one that that was the one I knew about before I even got here because you can read about it online, but that's the main avenue in Minsk. And the best part is it goes through a lot of different spots that are interesting. It goes through some of the main squares. It goes through Independent Square, it goes through October Square, which is one of the squares they have a Christmas market and the tree. But even if it's not Christmas time, it's one of the nicer squares here. Independent Square, I'd say is probably the most visually appealing. It has a nice church there, nice architecture. It's, it's a beautiful square, but I didn't find it as active as October square which always had some life and it's more in the middle of it all so I'd recommend going there for street photography but both of them I check out definitely and then up along Independence Avenue from October Square you can go into a couple parks the main one being Gorky Park which is a big park here there's a lot going on in there it's beautiful then you can keep going there's Victory Square which is more just of an internal flame and it's surrounded by road so there's not a lot of activity there but then if you keep going up independence avenue and you can take the metro too of course you'll get closer to kamaruski market which is my favorite market in the city it's the biggest one here it's the main market is enclosed but then there's market outside which is really where i like to photograph because then you have the light and it's interesting there's people selling fish I was here during Christmas, so there was a lot of Christmas items for sale, but you have a variety of things for sale here. The fish was probably my favorite, and then the produce is interesting too. People have a lot of character there, and every time I went there, there was something happening. So for guaranteed life, I'd say it may be Kamaruski Market's the best spot to go to for street photography. And then you can photograph the surrounding areas too. There's life 
all around the area because it brings people to the market. So then you have street sellers too. And then there's another square and park nearby. And then from there, you could actually keep going. Independence Avenue is really long, but I take the Metro if you're gonna keep going up. And then you can go to the National Library. And like I said earlier, there's a lot of different neighborhoods around there with the big like Soviet block apartments with the courtyards, which have like little playgrounds and people walking around. And it has a lot of atmosphere there. So definitely check that out if you're in Mints for street photography and just explore away. Another photography walk I really like doing in Mints was along the river, the Svislach River. My pronunciation might be off on that, but I'll put it on the screen below. But that river walk was really good. You can go from Gorky Park all the way up to, I think it's Victory Park. And just along the way, you pass different spots and parks. And going along the river, you'd see activity too, people feeding ducks. Uh, people hanging out at the different parks. It's just a good walk for photography with a change of scenery from the city. Even though it runs through the city, you don't have that city atmosphere. You have more park and river atmosphere with some life too. And I imagine if you're in the summer, there's even more life too. So basically, the river walk, Independence Avenue, the squares, like Independence Square, October Square, and then the parks, Gorky Park, Victory Park, and Kamaruski Market. Those are my top spots. And if you're ever here, you have to hit them all. And then just explore the different neighborhoods with the different courtyards. And I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy Minsk, especially if you like that Soviet atmosphere too, the architecture. It's a great city for photography. So now let's finish things off or end things off with a photo finish. We'll go into my computer. I selected 10 photos and not necessarily the best photos. I always save my best photos to not share for like around a year or until they're published in a book or zine. So these aren't my best photos, but they're some of my better photos where I can share some, maybe a story or a detail behind the photo. So let's get into my computer and then we'll come back out and I'll tell you what's coming next. All right, for a little photo finish on this video of my Mint's final impressions covering the city, I've selected around 10 photos spanning a variety of the city. Now, as always, I save my best photos for later for publication or to marinate for a while before showing them. But I have tried to select photos that I think aren't too bad, that I can share some insights or details behind, and again, that span a variety of the city. So we're going to start off in October Square here. Now, this photo is in October Square. Uh, right now during Christmas, as you can see, this was right when they were putting up the decorations and setting up the market. This was one of my first shots here, the first full day. It was actually one of the only really sunny days too. After the first full day here, it started to snow and then it became really cloudy and overcast. But that one day here where you had that sunlight, it was really good. So you had the winter light here. Now, first I was just looking at this. The, the square was completely empty but then when I saw her come with that jacket it matched this metallic horse here and the and the sled and in the light right light they both sh shined like that and it created kind of an interesting juxtaposition or dynamic or whatever you want to call it and I try to catch her in mid walk here when her face was facing away so you just get her jacket here in the light now here's at Kamaruski market and this is one of my favorite spots at the market. It's just outside the main part of the market, but they sell fish here. She has a scale and he's always taking fish out with a net. And again, this was the same day. So you had the nice light here. And I used the light and shadows to create a little bit of mystery, but still show enough detail and, and information. And nice blue and white colors too. But Kamaruski Market is probably my favorite area in the city for photography. This is on Independence Avenue, which is the main avenue. I did a photo walk talk on Independence Avenue. It covers a lot of area. This was right near October Square too. This was more of an instinctual shot. I like the, um, there's a lot going on here. There's four different people here, but I like the flow here. So I was just walking by and as soon as I saw these men here, I actually didn't even notice her at first. She was walking out of the Metro, but I saw this man here and then I saw that his face was that way and I saw that cigarette pointing that way and then he was that way. So you have some nice dynamic here where he's looking at me, he's looking that way with the cigarette pointing that way and he's looking in. So it kind of keeps you in the scene. And the shot's at a bit of an angle just because that's how I, they were up higher and I just did it again instinctually very quick. But it ha they have some character too. This is uh, near Victory Park. 
and I was walking along the river this day. As you can see, it, it got really cold, started to snow, and everything got icy. But uh, there was a ton of ducks out here, and there were people feeding them. And these boys were feeding them too, but now they were just playing around, jumping around. So I caught him in mid-motion as he's jumping from here to here. And now these are steps. So this is lower, this is higher, and this is even higher. So I'm up pretty high. There's a pretty decent distance between there. But because of the snow and how, how it, the, the angle I'm taking the shot, it almost looks flat. So it creates kind of an interesting dynamic for him with him jumping to here. And you can only see one leg. So I, I like that. It, there's a little bit of an illusion there almost. And then you have the boy down here too with the jacket and then all the ducks. But it's a really nice park to walk. I really like walking along the river here, as I've said. This was actually, this was pretty near where I was staying, right in the center. But I was just walking along. There wasn't a lot going on this day, but then I did like the fresh snow. And there was this big tree. And then I was just waiting for someone to walk by. And finally she walked by. And also I liked that she was all in black there. So I just waited for her to get in that one little spot in the middle. And so the snow resting on the different branches creates some nice atmosphere and, and look to it. And then she adds a little bit of life there. This was when I was went to the National Library. And as I've said in other videos, I really like this area, not mainly because of the National Library, which is worth just checking out, but for photography going to the neighborhoods close by where there's a different apartments and courtyards. So again, this was after some fresh snow. And so I just explored the whole area and it was interesting because there wasn't a lot going on in the city that day, but there was actually a little more life in the courtyards than there was in the city that day. And then as I was walking by, she came up and uh, she's pretty and she has nice the nice uh, fur hat here with the blonde hair and the... Uh, the scarf here and everything and hands in the pocket and as she was walking up I noticed that the wind was catching her hair and making it blow and that was really what made me take the shot so I just took the shot again pretty instinctually but I, I was watching her as she came and I tried to take it as candid as possible this is at the Christmas market which I did a photo walk talk on too which is by the sports uh, complex sports palace and this was at night of course I think right when it was turning night and you had some smoke in the air there and I like the Christmas lights here and then you have this swan carousel or the swan ride here because there was a little theme park there but I like the separation of the people here I like this couple they're a nice couple here with the fur coat and his jacket and this smoke creates a bit of a mood and then you have this guy here making a funny face and you have some nice flow. She's looking this way. He's looking this way. She's looking that way. He's looking that way. He's looking that way. So there's a lot of people looking in different directions while still being separated. And then you have the Christmas atmosphere and the smoke in the air. And some nice artificial light. Now this is right by that area too, but it's in a skating rink. And I was taking some photos of people skating. But then as I walked by, I noticed this couple... What I liked about it is sometimes I like the different illusions, if you can mix the illusions with some content too. So here you do have a, uh, some illusion there with the matching hoodie and jacket, so it blends together almost in one. And then you also have some content here because it's a couple here and he's embracing her with his hands around her. So I like that mix. And then above you have the skaters. But I did try to angle it so this was smooth like that so it created one hood almost this is back out there during the day and this was my second uh, day of sunlight again I had the whole month I had two days so this was the last one and it was a really one of the best days shooting out because you had that really nice light and you still had some snow too on the ground but here I was photographing this swan ride and I like the blue and the light against the white of the swans it's almost like pearlescent and it's just it's pretty in the light and this guy was in charge of the ride I took a few pictures of other people too but the, this guy for some reason he decided to get on and do a loop around to the back instead of walking back there and so he just hopped on and he was standing there so it was kind of funny but I really like the light and the colors and the swans and then you have some people back here too and then he kind of 
tops it off. And here's just, I, I don't know if you want to call this a street photo, but it's just a pretty picture. Um, the light was nice at the end of the day. This was the same day as the last one towards the end. And there was all these ducks here. So I was taking some pictures as the light reflected off here. And then I saw the swans come. And what's nice about the swans is everything's pretty dark here. And they stand out with the white. And also they both are looking the same way. So it really stands out. They're, they're in unison here. So there's some symmetry. And then you have the ducks back, back here creating some texture there. And you have the little light there to attract you. There's the sports palace complex there. And then you have the curve here. So it's a nice picturesque shot, I think. Wanted to make this pretty quick, but you get to see a variety here. But we'll add this one too because I have a video coming. I already created it a while ago, but shortly after this, I'd say five minutes later, I got arrested by one of these guys over here. So this was during a protest, and I was just photographing her, and there's uh, people protesting behind me. The protest had barely started, but I'm going to get into that. So stay tuned for a video I made all about my arrest and everything that happened that day after getting arrested. They took me to the station and everything. So it's a pretty interesting story, and I know people like to hear those stories from the project. So stay tuned for that. So we'll finish off with that. Actually, we'll just finish off with this, but I just wanted to tell you what's coming with that video. And let's get back out, and we'll finish this off. All right, so those are some of my final impressions of Mintz Belarus. Covering here is Major City number 106 on my project. And I had a great time covering the city. The year hasn't been great, and I'm still waiting to get back home, but the dilemma did bring me to Minsk, and it added it to the major city work. So for that, it wasn't too bad. And being here during the whole pandemic, everything was completely open in Minsk. And there's not even a mask ordinance, so I was able to photograph a lot of people without the mask, which, you know, for, for photos, that's a good thing because you get to see the expression and things like that. And I had the Christmas time going. The rest of Europe pretty much had no Christmas markets. So if I wasn't going to be home during Christmas time, being in Minsk wasn't that bad covering the city and photographing it for the major city work. So now that I'm done with Minsk and I have to move on, and because I still can't go back home because the borders are still closed, I'm going to Erevan, Armenia. I've never been there before, so I'll probably add it to the major city work too. And I've heard a lot of good things, so I'm excited about that. So I'll have a lot of videos coming from Erevan. And also, I have quite a few different videos that are not related to the places I'm at. Now we're going to really start getting into things and into my plans. A lot of the videos you're going to be able to find on Patreon. Some of them I'll share for free. Some will need a subscription, but we're going to get into a lot of different tutorials and a lot of more inside things, sharing from the projects and the different stuff I worked on. And yeah, it's going to be great. I'll sh always share a little bit so you get an idea. I'm excited about it because I planned this for a while. I have a lot of great ideas. I have a lot of unique things to add that I haven't seen out there by any other photographers. So that's what's coming. I'll share details on that next. Thanks for watching. And if you ever get a chance, come photograph Mintz, Belarus. It's a great city, unique. I highly recommend it. And until next time, I'll be in Erevan and I'll see you then. Cheers.